Hey, this is Kim. Come on and sew with me on Dorothy's Daughter today. Hello there. Welcome, welcome to my channel. This is Kim. Uh, this is Dorothy's daughter, and if you want to take your sewing to the next level, this is where you need to be. So today I thought I'd start a new thing. Um, lots of times new patterns come out on Fridays. Uh, Love Notions has their feature Friday. So I thought once in a while I would do a Sew With Me Friday. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I made the Rockford Raglan that I'm wearing today, and it just so happens that this is the feature Friday for Love Notions for only $5 today. If you uh, purchase it with my coupon code that works no matter whether there's a sale or not, um, it's extra 10% off if you use the code DOROTHY10. Now put that right down here, DOROTHY10. All right, well, I have a treat for you. This is uh, going to be short and sweet. This is the simplest top in the world to sew. And I know that it's actually a really, really good one to start if you're just starting to work with knits. So I'm going to go right to the footage and let you watch me make this top. Have a great time and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so first I'm going to determine my size. All right. My high bust is 37, so I'm going to go with the large because I'm actually closer to 38 than if I go down here. My bust at its fullest point is 43 right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do the full bust adjustment piece on that. And then my waist is actually 37, but I'm going to go ahead and um, say that that's enough ease right here on the finished measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is okay. My hips are now 44, so I think I can still get by with the large. Um, it's gonna be a tad tight, but since it's a very stretchy fabric and um, since I'm still losing weight, I'm gonna go ahead and do the 44. My bicep is 13, so this falls within that range. So the large full bust is what I'm going to choose to make. and the front part of the sleeve you can tell which one is the front because it's a little more curved and not quite as long okay I'm gonna go ahead and clip and sew these with my serger now since these stripes are pretty close together, there's not too much to worry about in the way of matching, but um, of course if you, if you did have some larger stripes, you might want to make some notches in there so that you can match it up really well. I just use clips. I think they're a little bit quicker than um, using pins. And if you've ever run over a pin with your serger, you'll never want to do it again. It's uh, not, not a good thing. So 
I'm going to go ahead and sew this at 3 eighths of an inch seam. Right sides together. Always, always. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the other sleeve. Attach it to the front. This is going to be a really pretty top. Again, you would want to match these stripes better if it was a, a larger stripe. These are, I mean, they're like maybe less than an eighth of an inch apart, so probably not going to matter a whole lot. I did make sure they were on when I cut them. Okay. Sort of fun to just sew today and uh, not have a whole lot of interruptions. It's been fun. The only interruptions I've had are my dogs because they're working on the patio and I can't let them go out in the back. So anytime they have to go, I have to take them out. <laughs> so. It is not fun. They're getting better though. They're getting used to going out as I uh, have gone through them last night and today. Um, they're getting a little, it's getting a little easier for them. They're, I don't know if you can see that, but they're cutting down trees across the street. So if, if there's a sound issue, that's probably why. <laughs> It seems like all of a sudden today it's really noisy around here. It's been such a quiet neighborhood so far, but not today. All right, I'm going to go ahead and storage that one as well. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance. There might be a little bit of ease as you um, put these together. It shouldn't really be a lot of stretching, just ease. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the back. Put the back onto here. Here's my back piece. Of course, right sides together. Do that in the same manner. Once you get these cut out, they're a breeze to put together. It's really kind of a, a fun pattern because it goes together so quickly. And you can color block and do all kinds of fun things. Um, I fell in love with this violet lavender color and um, really wanted to use it for, for the sleeves. It has it in there right, right in that area. All right, I'm gonna actually just pin these both so that I can just surge both at one after the other. Okay, I'm gonna surge these. 
So here I have so far, all right, I am going to try this on and um, we'll sit back down and do the neckband next. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press this. And I like to press it toward the shirt. Everybody has their preference here, but I like to go ahead and press it toward the center. so that the sleeve piece is kind of laying flat. So when I cut this out, I cut out two different neck bands, one of each kind of fabric, because I wasn't sure what I was going to want. Now this one, I think might be the winner. The cuffs are going to be out of this fabric as well. I think that looks really nice. Um, or this one which actually I might like even better. Yes, I think I like this one. I feel like it uh, dresses it up a little bit more. You can put your comments and let me know what you think. Um, but of course it's already gonna be done, but you can still let me know what you think, what you would have done. I feel like this lends itself to a necklace more. Just me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do the center back seam of this neckband, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to the serger and sew it on um, after I clip it in, of course. Now I take this to the uh, iron and shape it up and pin it into the neckline. Now I'm gonna take my neckband and press that seam. Give that a little trim to get rid of those extra threads. If you keep those threads out of your way, it can go a long way toward just less frustration and less mistakes. I have found if I don't trim excess threads, then I end up with kind of a mess. Okay, this is gonna be curly, so just have to press it really well. 
and there's nothing, nothing really you can do except to just keep working with it. Um, once you clip it on, it'll be okay. I use a combination of clips and pins for this. So the center back is one marking. And then you just go ahead and pull that out like that. And this will be the center front. Kind of curly. All right, let me do that again, make sure. Center front. And then you bring those two together and you have the quarters, which are not gonna ma match up to shoulder notches, just a FYI. Um, unless the shoulder notch is automatically put there. Uh, but normally, since the neckline dips down in the front, normally the quarter will fall just a little bit in front of the shoulder seam. Okay, there's one quarter. And another over here. We got the curls today. <laughs> All right. Bring those together, and here's the other cord. Okay, so I have four points marked there. This is the center back. Okay, I'm gonna take it like this, and just look at your shoulders to see which one is which. This is obviously the front. That's the front, that's the back, all right? So your center back, you're just gonna go ahead and take and hold those together. And here's where I use clips, all right? I find using pins on one and clips on the other makes it a little less cumbersome. Okay, and now the center front. Okay. And then to find the quarter mark around, which is not the same as the shoulder point, sometimes can be, but what you wanna do is you wanna bring those two clips together and then find where it is. See, that's how you know. Just in half and half again. All right. I'm going to turn this inside out to make it a little easier. Okay. Okay, so you're going to start in the center back, which is where the seam is. And you're going to match that up right there. And I leave the pin in until I clip it, and then you can pull the pin out. Then go to the other halfway point. Make sure you're putting raw edges, not, um, not the fold. <laughs> Done that before. And then went, oops, I gotta repin this. And then once you put it on there, pulling the pin out. That's why I like to use a combination. All right, and then we'll go to the center front. Pull 
pull the pin. And the other quarter, uh, the other quarter mark. Okay. <laughs> Make sure the curls are all uncurled where you mark it. And now a tip when it's curly like this, I will typically go ahead and go in between these points kind of Pull it out straight and match it up again halfway so that you don't have to continuously uncurl everything only an eighth at a time. <laughs> so it's just a little tamer. Not a lot, but a little. But you really have to be careful. Um, you can even put more if you want to just to help you with the curl. Curly knits are just a fact of life. So on this one, it's pretty darn curly, so I'm gonna go ahead and put clips all the way around. Now after this, I'm gonna go to my serger and serge this neckband on. However, if you are uh, someone who isn't confident with your serger just yet and maneuverability and all that, you might wanna do this part on a sewing machine. Um, I would just use a stretch stitch of some kind. Um, if you don't have a stretch stitch, uh, you could use a um, very, very, very narrow zigzag will work just as well. Quiet, quiet minute. <clears throat> All right. So I basically eighthed this instead of quartered it because of the curly knit. And, you know, put as many as you think you need in there. Um, just remember you're stretching the neckband to fit the neckline, not the other way around, okay? All right, I'm gonna take this to my serger and go ahead and sew the neckband on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and serge this neckband on. I typically start in the back. And like I said, if you're not a confident serger, if you're not confident with your serger yet, you should just do this on a sewing machine. And I have to be super careful and make sure those curls are out of the way. This is a cotton jersey, and they're just known to be like that. So the best tip I can give you about the neckline is to go ahead and let the neckline itself stay flat and stretch the neckband to match the curve of the neckline. Don't stretch the neckline, stretch the neckband. If you have a lot of trouble with curves, just with curls, just keep unfurling them. <laughs> unfurling. It's okay. 
okay to go slow. You don't have to be fast at this juncture. <laughs> end of this one leave a little bit of a tail so when you with this tail you're going to go ahead and get a large pin and pull it through the surging so that it's um, sealed off all right next is going to be the side seams we're just going to go ahead and clip them together and sew them up on the serger make sure that your Make sure that you're too, that you check the seam line and match those up exactly. Hold it tight and then put a clip there so that your seams match up. A tip for curly knits when you're sewing side seams. Now you don't want to do any stretching when you're doing the side seams, but a nice tip is to put the pins lengthwise. So it kind of holds those curls open as you sew. And then you have to be super careful to pull them out before it gets to the um, cutter. When you're doing a vertical seam, it shouldn't stretch very much. Just an FYI, this is the one place I need to really make sure that they are matching so I'm definitely pinning so that I'm matching the stripes. Just a little extra, a little extra TLC for that, pinning away here. I'm going to go ahead and sew. And the other side. Match up the seams. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the cups. So I'm going to take the cups and I'm going to go ahead and sew this seam down both cups. go ahead and press this to one side. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it into a cuff. ready to attach that to the sleeve. Okay, so I have one of the sleeves. 
And I don't do quarters for sleeves, I just do halves. So basically the seam is a marker and then the halfway point is a marker. So same here, and since you've pressed them that way already, it's pretty easy to put the seam seams together. Here's a place where you want to very carefully match up that seam. And then you want to clip it really securely in place. All right, and then find that halfway point. That halfway point is here. All right, and then just take it over. You don't even need pins this time. Just match it here. Kind of hang on to it. Okay, there's one, and we're gonna do the other one the same. And then I'm gonna go to my serger and serge this on, stretching only the band, not the sleeve, okay? And now we're gonna sew the cuffs on. Make sure you only stretch the band and not the sleeve itself. On this particular pattern, there's not really a lot of stretching to be done anyway. All right, I noticed a little flaw in the fabric that I never saw before, right along the hem. It's gonna kind of get eaten up in the hem, but just to make sure, I'm gonna show you a trick, what I do when this happens. I will take a very tiny piece of the fabric, cut it as small as you can to cover the hole grab some fusible thread, or if you have uh, stitch witchery or one of those type products, you could also use that. But basically, just gonna kind of ball up some fusible thread to hold it on there. Just kind of make a little, a little ball out of it. Put that down and then put the piece on top. Face down. Okay. Now you might want to get a press cloth so that the usable stuff doesn't get on your iron. I'm actually just going to use a little bit of this as a press cloth. Make sure that melts. Okay, and do it a couple more times. Do it about at least 10 to 20 seconds. I like to really do it a lot. Okay. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. Let it cool here a minute. Then you're just gonna kind of trim the parts that didn't stick. And believe it or not, this stays there quite a long time. In fact, I had one that I had done it and then I totally forgot about it. And as you can see, you cannot, and you can see it if you look up close, but from far away, you won't see it. And best of all is it's not gonna run anywhere. And then I like to just take a little bit of fray check And that should be pretty secure and you won't even see it. Once that dries, you'll never see it. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna press this up an inch and finish it off on the cover stitch. And then I'll show you my finished shirt. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed making a top with me today, the Rockford Raglan. Remember that it's only $5 today, September 16th, 2022 and uh, you can get an extra 10% by using the code DOROTHY10. All right, have a wonderful day. I will see you guys early next week. Happy sewing.